What is up? What is up? Welcome to Legendary Podcast, my friends. This is episode number four, and we are not only, of course, doing it live here, or not live, but you know what I mean by live on Apple iTunes, which is most likely where you're listening to this, but you may also be over on legendarypodcast.com. You can catch the videos we're recording, at least these first five episodes, so you can go over there and catch them on the website. So what I'm going to be talking about today is something that is just just interesting, I think, to me. And I'll tell you why. I'll give you some backstory. So I started my journey back in 2009 because I got clean in 2008. And for those of you who are just tuning in, by me getting clean, I mean I had a life of homelessness and addiction and hopelessness and struggle uh, for about eight years from about the age of 14. And when I got clean in 2008, that little burn in my belly, which I talk about in episode one, started to really, 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 you know, come to the surface. And I really decided and realized that what that meant, because I didn't fit into the norms of society and I was constantly busting through the status quo of what was what was designed and built for me was that that really meant and I wanted to become an entrepreneur. And so I did. And my my like my ideas of what an entrepreneur was were different than it is today and not in the sense that I don't still want to you know build companies that I don't want to you know have financial freedom and time freedom and you know not have to work on somebody else's time clock like I feel like that stuff is all super surface like that's the kind of stuff that we talk about when we first get started in entrepreneurialism. It's like, okay, you know, I don't want to work for a job. I don't want to, you know, I want to, I want to be on my own hours. I, you know, I don't want to have to get up and, and go, you know, punch into a clock. Like I get that. I've been talking about that stuff for a long time. And there's a lot of people, there's like a million videos online. If that's like the stuff that you're looking to get you pumped up, there's like 10 million videos online that will talk about, okay, you don't want to punch into a clock. We get it. But as I built my, my companies and, and my businesses, I was shooting for these huge numbers. I was like really trying to go big, okay? And what I ended up doing was going a mile wide and an inch deep. Now that does not, that's, not, that's not here to say that I didn't have a lot of impact on people's lives because I really truly had the privilege to do what I talked about in episodes two and three, which was really clarify my story and and communicate a powerful message. And at the end of the day, regardless of all the stuff that I wasn't good at, like the tech stuff, and I'm still not. Like I I got you should see my home screen on my computer. It's like a disaster. I'm not the most organized guy in the world. Like I'm not the guy who's going to be doing productivity courses. I'm just not because that's not my strength. My strength is really leveraging the internal, inside stuff that's going on inside of all of us and tapping into that power inside of me to live passionately and communicate powerfully and be influential, whether it be on video or audio or, or especially in live, uh, in live environments. And so as I built my companies, I I, I was really just looking, I, I, I had a, what I called a big vision. And so what that meant was I wanted to go worldwide. I wanted to, you know, and we did. In, in one of my companies anyways, we did about $150 million in sales in not even three years. We had more than 200,000 customers. It was, it was really, really powerful. And it showed just what you can have if you put your nose to the grind and just get it done, which is what we did. And what happened at the end of that run for me was, and this is something that you're just gonna hear me continue to get more, more real and more raw and more just find the language to be able to communicate exactly the process that I went through. And I'm still clarifying that on, on my end too. So I, I'm gonna be going through this journey sort of with you because and and I, and I as a side note I'll tell you that you know I really truly believe that one of the best ways to move through something is to actually just take action and and just figure it out as you go and so that's the way that I build my businesses a lot is I don't have to know everything up front but what happened at the end of that run was I found myself in 2014 not only unfulfilled and it wasn't because I wasn't surrounded by great people it's just because 
Again, I was going a mile wide and an inch deep, opposed to a mile deep and an inch wide. And I found myself disconnected from my wife. I found myself traveling and, and being not being able to be present with my daughter. And I found myself almost losing touch with the with the contribution and fulfillment aspect of my business. And I realized at that time that there was more for me to do business and there was more to this whole process for me than just making money. Money was great and I know I need it and of course we all want it, but there was more for me. I wanted to be able to be present with my wife. I wanted to be able to be the dad that I'm gonna be proud to be when it's time for me to leave this earth and my daughter remembers me and tells stories about me. For me, business at a core level is, is about more meaning than just money and toys. And so I faced that harsh reality. And it gave me this perspective that really made me question everything that I knew about building a business because I know a lot of people out there right now who are building businesses who are one person on stage and on camera and they're a, t a totally different person off camera and off stage because they're doing a lot of things that they don't really want to do. And oftentimes what entrepreneurs find is that they left doing one thing. Maybe it was the job that they left some years ago and all of a sudden they've created a self-made prison for themselves inside of their business because it's either they've either isolated themselves or they haven't found the courage or the ability or the, the, the strategies to be able to be completely authentic and design their life and their business in a way that not only serves their bank account, but also serves their spirit. And so that was what I was faced with. And I had this question, and luckily I got to answer this question at the age of 30 and not at the age of 70 or 80. I feel very blessed that I was faced with such a turning point, it was like a crossroads, that I was 30 years old standing there with all of the money and the toys and everything that I'd ever wanted with a decision, do you want to continue to go and do something that's going to become more and more unfulfilling just because it pays well, or do you want to step back and take the risk to find meaning and find fulfillment and also make money and combine all of those things to do something that's really truly legendary? And that was the question that I was faced with. On top of that, in 2014, I was faced with a doctor telling me that I absolutely needed to get treatment for hepatitis C. Because of my drug addiction back in, from the age of 14 to 24, I had contracted hepatitis C, which was something that happened when I was actively using drugs intravenously. It was a, it's a blood-borne virus that attacks your liver, and my viral loads, which was the amount of the virus that I had in my system, were, were, were quickly rising. And so all of these stars were aligning for me, and I was at an Oprah event. Fellas, don't judge me. I love Oprah. I've come to love her even more. My wife turned me on to her. She was listening to Super Soul Sundays. I'm doing a plug for Oprah right now because I feel that this woman is truly the epitome of somebody who walked away from everything that she had built in, a, in, a, in, in such a dignified way and went on to really do something that I feel is going to leave much of a deeper legacy, which is her spiritual work and her personal development work that she's doing through her events now and her, her um, shows on like serious radio and stuff. But Oprah said at one of her events that my, I was like one of the only, I was like 10 guys in an auditorium of like 15,000 women. And I, I heard something that that really resonated with me and I wanna share it with you right now, which is she said that God nudges us and, and whispers in our ear the, this message. That it's that little feeling that we feel like in our gut that something's you know, maybe not quite right or that we're doing something in our business that's not really up to our true potential or that we have this purpose and we're not really truly fulfilling it. And that was the whisper that I got in my ear. And, and I didn't listen to it at first. At first, I just sort of heard the whisper and I was like, eh, you know, maybe that's not what's really going on right now because you know what, I'm making so much money and like there's so much limelight, and there's so much, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, all this, the shiny stuff. And then what she said was, God will sort of give you a little elbow and maybe something will happen. That elbow will look like maybe a divorce, maybe some sort of an issue to where there's a disconnect in your relationship with your kids or maybe you have a health issue, like maybe somebody has a heart attack or a stroke or 
like me let a virus condition that I knew about for five years continue on until the doctor said, you've got to take care of this. Whatever it is, God gives us a nudge. And if we don't listen to that, then God gives us the two by four and smacks us up across the head. And who knows, maybe that's the debilitating stroke, the debilitating heart attack. Maybe that's the divorce that completely crushes us that we can't recover from. Maybe that's our business completely tanking because we're so spread thin and we're so burnt out and we're so overwhelmed and we're so frustrated that we're not able to move forward and really keep our head in the game. We get burnt out. I've seen it happen over and over again. And so for me these days, and what I believe that I've started to learn to do is listen to that whisper. And regardless of what you believe in, whether it's God or the universe, or if it's nothing at all, if it's just your own intuition, then as we grow in our business as entrepreneurs, the thing that's going to move us forward as we grow into that scale and multiply phase to where we ask ourselves, how do we get from five to, you know, six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine figures? These are the things that become important for us to have the self-awareness and the ability to be able to listen and see the signs around us. So what I did as I came back into the business world, developed curriculum because of the issues that I had had previously in starting businesses and not really taking into consideration how I wanted that business to serve me. So I developed a process called the personal clarity process, and I'd like to pass it on to you today for free on this podcast. And of course, you can go and download the, the download exercise in Blueprint over on Legendary Podcast. Uh, episode four, legendarypodcast.com, episode four. It, the purpose of this personal clarity process is to help you before or if you want to start over. It doesn't matter if you already have a business. What my goal for you is to take a look at not only what's going to serve your customers, but also what is going to serve you. So many times we're told or taught from people who really truly have no business teaching entrepreneurs that, you know what, the first thing you do is you find a hot niche. Okay, then you go and you put the product in front of those people and you just, you know, you just make sales. And the truth is, is that I may find a hot niche and I may find a product that I can sell people and I may find an audience that will buy the product that I have. But if I don't structure the business in a way that serves me personally, like me as a human being, then what's going to happen is I'm going to end up unfulfilled. I'm going to end up not feeling like my life or my business has meaning. And I may even let things like my health and my relationships slide to the side because why? I'm so stretched, spread thin inside of my business because I didn't consider my own needs before I started my business. So some of the questions that we ask ourselves in this process of getting clarity personally about what we want. And I know it sounds selfish, but in order to serve the world, you first have to make sure that you're getting fed. You can't just feed and never eat. So me, the way that I think about service and the way that I think about making an impact on the world is I think about it from this place of, okay, am I getting fed? Am I serving myself so I make sure that I have the right spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical conditioning to be able to go out into the world and be present and be whole and be powerful. And so doing the personal clarity process, either before or right now, and maybe reapproaching your business, will give you the tools or at least the awareness to say, God, what am I doing inside of my business that's no longer serving me? And what I really hope for you, like my wish is that, that these tools and these stories give you this perspective to really say, you know what? I want to build a powerful, purposeful, passionate life in business doing only what I was born to do and never again sacrifice my real true purpose for anything besides what I'm really born to do. And I know that sounds like a stretch. A lot of people sound, hear these podcasts and hear me speak and they say, it takes a while. Like they, it takes a while because I'm here talking about living in your purpose, living with passion, doing what you were intended and born to do and, and put on this earth to do. And some people are like, oh, I, I can't see how to make that happen. I mean, I'm selling tires or I'm selling insurance or, you know, I'm selling, you know, 
I'm selling software, but it, it can be possible and it doesn't require you to switch careers or even change your business. It's just a, how we approach business is the difference maker between truly being successful in all areas of our life and being very unsuccessful. Because here's the deal. I believe that if you're financially wealthy, but your relationships are falling apart, I believe that if you're your relationships with your kids are, are really you know, struggling. I believe that if your health is deteriorating, what the hell is it all worth for anyways? I mean, I really want you to envision yourself on your deathbed and what is really gonna be important to you. Is it gonna be the fact that you made an extra $100,000 in 2015? Or is it gonna be the fact that you built a business and a life that was fulfilling and impactful and gave you that, that fire to want to get up every day and live with passion with the relationships that you have and be present for them and, and go out and serve people at your highest level, not just showing up and going through the motions. So the personal clarity process starts by asking yourself what you have thought that you've wanted in the past. And then it goes on to ask you what you really want. So in the past, and this requires some honesty as a side note, I mean, I'm really asking you to go deep here. So in the past, you may have verbally said, God, I want cars, I want houses, I want the big flashy, I want the, I don't even wear this. Sorry, the number you have reached. Okay, hey guys, not to interrupt the video or the podcast here, but we had a little bit of an audio glitch. And I thought it was a good opportunity to sort of stop and kind of scratch the record and talk about something real quick. As a per recovering perfectionist, which is me, and also, don't even get me started on my, my sound engineer slash creative genius, Peter, who is the one behind the scenes making all of the audios and the videos look cool, his perfectionism wanted to try to fix the audio in the next section because I dropped my microphone and something happened inside of this podcast where it's going to be a little echoey. The content's still awesome, obviously, but the audio quality uh, is a little bit crappy. But there's a lesson inside of this, and I thought I'd share it real quick, which is just if you want to build a business, if you really want to execute on your goals, you, sometimes you have to strive for progress, not perfection. So that's exactly what we're doing here inside of this podcast is we're striving for progress, not perfection. The audio quality is not going to be that great, but you know what? Our mission and our message is more important than the audio quality of one podcast. So we decided to just keep it moving and turn it into sort of a little sidebar that I could talk about and be transparent about because sometimes that's just how it is. And we got so much stuff going on behind the scenes that we wanted to continue to push this project forward so we could get more podcasts out. So that's enough of me. Let's jump back into the content. Again, the audio, audio quality is not going to be that great. However, it's progress, not perfection sometimes. So give yourself a break. I'll do the same. Let's get back into the podcast. Cars, I want houses. I want the big flashy. I want the, I don't even wear this. I, I got a, whoops, my microphone fell. I got it like a big gold chain and everything, and I mean it's 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 cool. And when I want to get my ghetto on, I put it on and I you know do my thing, jump in my Range Rover, throw my Rolex on, and just ball hard. But at the end of the day, what I really want is I want to share a powerful, passionate message with the people who choose to hear it, and I want to live inside of my life's purpose. Like that's actually all that matters to me. And if I'm not doing that, I feel extremely unfulfilled. If I am doing that, I don't. It doesn't matter if I'm driving a Pinto. I'm on fire for life, right? So here's the deal. I can have the the the, the Range Rover, the big house. I can have the big gold chains. I mean, I'm talking about Mr. T starter set all up on my neck. But if I'm doing something every single day that I hate. I'm miserable. And I've met a lot of miserable people who are uber rich, but they're not living in their purpose. They're not passionate about what they're doing. They don't really truly believe in it. And they're miserable. So after we ask or answer what we thought we wanted and what we've been chasing in the past and what we really truly want at a deeper level, then we go on to describe our desire in one word. Okay, so that desire may be freedom, okay, it may be fulfillment, it may be wealth and money and, and materialistic items. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with any of these answers. What I 
am encouraging you and guiding you to do is to find what's true for you. And it doesn't particularly have to be what's true for your neighbor. I do this in my workshops and events and experiences all over the country to where I see somebody looking over at their neighbor's paper and I say, stop that. Stop that. This is about you. This is about what you want. This is about getting in touch with what's right for you. So describe your desire in one word. For me, it is fulfillment. It is meaning. I do want to have meaning behind what I'm doing because here's the catch for those of you who are like, yo, I'm on a paper chase right now, is that when I'm in that impact phase, when I'm chasing meaning, when I'm chasing fulfillment, when I'm, when I'm not, when I can't rest until I'm absolutely living my true purpose, then the, it's amazing how the money just flows in. It's unbelievable. But when I'm doing what, something that I know is not, like I'm struggling in my life, I'm not present in my relationships, and I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm not really living up to my full potential, I'm just, all of my life sort of sucks. That's just for me. You have to find out what's true for you. So after you describe your desire in one word, ask yourself, what are you passionate about? What do you care deeply for? For me, I'm passionate about human beings and watching and being a part of their journey of growth as they step into their power. That's all I care about. I don't care about anything else. I was just on the phone with somebody talking about some technology and stuff like that. And we were talking about systems and technologies and websites. And it's all I could talk about was people. It's 90% of the call was just talking about people, what I wanted to do, why I wanted to do it, the impact that I thought it could have, why I thought it was meaningful. It's all I talked about. I actually am a horrible project manager because I can't stay focused on the actual project because I just start talking about people. It's all I care about. It's what I care deeply for. My relationships, I'm obsessed with growing and being a better man for my wife and being a better man for my kid and, and being a better man for my clients and working on myself so I can serve them at a higher level. It's all I care about, you know? And so, and I've been like that for a long time. It's what I'm passionate about. You have to answer for you what is true for you. And this requires some thinking. I, I'm just giving you an example of what's true for me. Next, this is where we really get into asking ourselves, what are our best personality traits? Like, what is our best attributes about who we are? And when we identify those, we're able to really use those in a way that's, so we can, let me say it like this. We want to structure our business to where we're using our best character traits. I say that's as simple as it is. I want to be in business. If I'm really good with my hands and I, I'm not a talker, I need to be in business working with my hands, painting, building, doing things like that. If I suck with my hands, which I don't suck, but I'm, de I'm certainly not my dad. My dad is a genius. He's brilliant. Now, he can talk too, but the man is like Picasso when it comes to building stuff. You just give him wood and he'll make the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. I've got examples of that all over my home. Me, not so much. You kind of put a hammer and a nail and a couple of pieces of wood and I'm bound to hurt myself, okay? So my best attributes are communication, teaching, um, influencing, and working with people, okay? You have to find out what yours are, which leads us into the next question. What is the unique gift that you possess that can change people's lives? Now, I've talked about this a little bit on previous episodes, at least alluded to it, but I'm going to bring it back because it's so important, and I want you to identify what that is. What is your most unique gift? Because your most unique gift is also your most profitable skill if you can build your business around only doing that. So let me give an example of mine. So mine is <clears throat> speaking in live environments, teaching, and putting on live events and working with people. And anything else besides that is not my most powerful gift. So when I'm even writing emails, when I'm even writing copy, which I can also write, right? I've developed that skill. When I'm working and, and, and doing social media marketing, like, and a lot of people have looked at me and said, Dave, you're a good marketer. I am a good marketer, but I'm a great speaker and a great, I'm, and I don't, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. What I have done the work on is being okay with what I'm good at and also being okay with what I'm not good at. Because I know I'm not a good cook. I suck at cleaning. I cut corners. I get real lazy. You know, back in the day before me and my wife decided we were going to start having somebody clean our house, I was the sloppiest, laziest house cleaner ever. And I argued and fought to clean the house all the time because I didn't want to do it. You try to work, have me work on your car, disaster. Even build something like I alluded to before, not really going to go well. 
You want me to build your website? Good, I'll ruin it. But when it comes to doing what I do, which I've learned over the years is my unique gift, which is communicating and coaching and working with people, that's where my true power lies, and it happens to also be my most profitable skill. So you can get this entire worksheet and this download over on legendarypodcast.com on episode four. I went a little bit longer with this one than I planned, but this is such an important topic. And I think the reason why I'm so passionate about it is because I have experience with not really knowing how to look at these things as I'm building my business. And what happened was I didn't particularly build a nightmare for myself, but there were part of parts of my life that I really had to say, okay, this sort of sucks, and I need to find a better approach to make sure that my business and what I'm doing not only serves my clients, but it also serves me. This is Dave Sharp with the Legendary Entrepreneur Podcast. You can leave us a rating, you can leave us a comment, all that good jazz. We'd super appreciate it if you feel that this is impactful. Share it with people and get the message out. We want people to experience here everything that they didn't learn in Harvard, everything you didn't learn in school, or everything that people don't teach you about entrepreneurialism. We want you to learn it right here. Uh, and we want to pass this information on because it's meaningful and inspire you to also pass the information and the wisdom that you have in your head and heart onto the world. You can also find the videos we're recording at least these first five episodes over on legendarypodcast.com. And you can find the downloads. You can find some other cool stuff. You can subscribe to our newsletter. And we'll only send you awesome stuff all the time. All right, this is Dave Sharp. Catch you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.